Breaking Bad is one of the most beloved TV shows ever made. The show is great at surprising its audience time after time. This is in part because it is a masterclass in setup and payoff. Here's how they do it. The classic rule of how to explain setup and payoff in a story is Chekhov's gun. It's a quote by the playwright Anton Chekhov, which goes, If you say in the first chapter that there is a rifle hanging on the wall, in the second or third chapter it absolutely must go off. If it's not going to be fired, it shouldn't be hanging there. Sometimes when you hear this quote, the wording gets changed around, but the core message is always the same. If it's not important to the plot, it shouldn't be in the story. Stories are not the same as real life. In real life, sometimes things just happen. There's not always a reason for everything, and not everything is connected. In fiction, though, that's not the case. Fiction is crafted by human beings with intent. Everything you see and hear in fiction, somebody had to choose to put it there. Now, I could go into a lot more detail about why this is the case, but honestly, it's been done before. There are hundreds of essays about Chekhov's gun out there. I'll put some materials in the description in case anyone's curious. Instead of talking about why Chekhov's gun exists, this video will dive into what its existence means for writers and audience members. See, TV audiences are, on average, pretty smart when it comes to fiction. TV fans watch dozens of shows, and can keep track of tons of details, sometimes over the course of years. And they know about Chekhov's gun, if not by name, then at least as a concept they've observed. They know that if something wasn't important, it wouldn't be in the story. And they know the reverse. If something is included in the story, then it is important. This presents a pretty big challenge for writers. How do you surprise your viewers when they know that every big reveal has to have a setup? To illustrate this problem, here's one of the few moments from Breaking Bad that kind of misses the mark in this regard. Most people, when they see this clip, can immediately guess what's going to happen later in the show. In real life, you wouldn't spare a second thought if you saw someone stumble on a carpet. But when it's on the screen, you think to yourself, Okay, he's gonna trip on this again later. Otherwise, why did the camera linger on this? If it weren't important, the show wouldn't have wasted my time showing it to me. And to shift away from Breaking Bad for a moment, here's a much less subtle example of the same thing from Ant-Man. You know, I think this regulator is holding Do me back. not screw with the regulator. If that regulator is compromised, you would go subatomic. It means that you would enter a reality where all concepts of time and space become irrelevant as you shrink for all eternity. Hmm. Gee, I wonder how this movie's gonna end. I'm gonna have to shrink between the molecules to get in there. Get away from us! Daddy, help! I love you, Cassie. Sometimes writers tip their hand a little too much in their setups. But not everything has to be a huge twist that nobody saw coming. It's okay for the audience to know that the writer is hanging the gun on the wall, just as long as they don't know exactly what it's leading to. Like this classic scene. I'm running a special on these little honeys. JHPs, hollow point bullets known by the natives as Black Death. Check it out. Ah, you like that? So sweet you want to lick it. Nickel-plated brass casing, level ox coat for panache. Sucker has six razor claws that expand upon impact. <sighs> Shred your mama's head like a cabbage. This guy describes specifically how this special type of bullet destroys a human skull. So when you watch this, you know that somebody will get shot in the head with it. But the fun comes from not knowing who will get shot. In this case, having some of the information makes the show more suspenseful, as you wait for someone to die. Sometimes a story will tell you that it's setting something up, but you'll have no idea what that is. Throughout Season 2, Breaking Bad opened episodes with shots of this teddy bear. They were completely out of context. The bear meant nothing to the audience at the time. The audience had no clue what it was leading towards. But because it was an obvious Chekhov's gun, they knew that it was setting up something. So they get to spend the whole season wondering, until the season finale gives them payoff.
Okay, so not every reveal has to be a surprise. Sometimes the writer can use the audience's expectations to get them excited when they set something up. But what about when you do want to surprise the audience? How does a story set up a twist without the audience noticing? The story can't hide the setup, the audience has to see it in order to get the payoff. They get around it by hiding it in plain sight, disguising it as something else. Because not every element of a story is a huge plot-altering thing. Sometimes it can be for something else, much smaller, like introducing a character trait, or establishing a setting, or just as a throwaway joke. Best case scenario, I'm managing a Cinnabon in Omaha. But story elements can exist for more than one reason. Or Nebraska, what's in Nebraska? You. From now on. What Breaking Bad is so great at is introducing a setup that looks like it has an obvious but relatively small reason for existing. The audience sees it and assumes that they know what it's for. And once they do that, they stop thinking about it. Then when it comes back to pay off something huge later, they'll be caught completely by surprise. Like, for example, the ATM. In one episode, Jesse meets Spooge and his wife. Spooge steals an ATM, but can't get the money out. I don't like any sense. Of course it makes sense. Every safe's got its weak spot, right? Say you're designing a safe, where are you gonna put your weak spot? Nowhere. This moment establishes Spooge and his wife as criminals and junkies who aren't very smart. When the audience watches this, they assume that that's why the A-Team is there, to explain who they are as characters. But no, that's not the last time the ATM is relevant to the story. It comes back in a big and gruesome way. Or take this classic moment with Hank. Be will pop. Here we learn that Hank is brewing his very own beer, Schraderbrow, complete with a logo of his face. It's easy to assume that this is just here for comic relief. It's yet another moment showing Hank as a weird guy with weird hobbies and absolutely no sense of embarrassment. But it comes back into play later. Hank thinks he's hearing gunshots, but it's really bottles of Schraderbrow exploding. The scene introducing Schraderbrow was a joke, it was a character moment, and it is also to set up this tense moment. And the way the story disguises the setup as a joke makes the payoff a lot tenser and harder to predict. Another option a story has is to mess with the payoff, set up something that seems like it has a clear path, and then subvert it. Like when Walt shatters a plate in front of his prisoner, Crazy Eight and Crazy 8 swipes a broken piece to use as a weapon for later. This is a classic Chekhov's gun. A character gets a weapon, and then later uses it to win a fight. In most other stories, Walt would have been dead meat. But instead, it doesn't work. Walt realizes there's a missing piece of the plate, and avoids getting stabbed. So let's put this all together for what is easily the biggest Chekhov's gun in the whole show the ricin cigarette. Walt puts a capsule of ricin, a deadly poison, inside of a cigarette. He and Jesse plan on using it to kill Gus. They try, but they never find the right opportunity. Chekhov's gun is set up, payoff subverted. Then Jesse's girlfriend's son, Brock, falls mysteriously ill. Jesse suspects that Walt used the ricin to poison Brock, and he tells the doctors to check for ricin poisoning. But then the doctors don't find any trace of ricin in Brock and Walt shows Jesse that he still has the ricin. So you'd think that Walt didn't do it, right? Except, earlier, Walt is shown staring at a potted plant in his backyard. When the doctors diagnose Brock, they discover that Brock had eaten poisonous berries from a plant called Lily of the Valley. And the final shot of that episode reveals that that plant in Walt's backyard is called Lily of the Valley. So what do we have in this collection of scenes? We have an obvious setup of a Chekhov's gun and the rice and cigarette, but there are several thwarted attempts to use it. While you're waiting for the expected victim to get poisoned, somebody else gets poisoned who wasn't even in the equation. Meanwhile, you get a scene of Walt randomly staring at a plant, which you know is important, otherwise they wouldn't show it to you, but you don't know why. Then the payoff is subverted a second time when you find out that the ricin was never used. Your focus was on the wrong gun. The poisoning wasn't caused by the obvious poison, it was caused by a different piece of setup that you weren't paying as much attention to. And finally, after all this, the Rice and Chekhov's gun does eventually go off, when Walt uses it to kill Lydia in the finale. Kind 
up under the weather, like you've got the flu, that would be the ricin I gave you. I slipped it into that stevia crap that you're always putting in your tea. Breaking Bad is a very smartly written show. Its real brilliance, though, comes from the show knowing that its audience is smart, too. It uses its audience's expectations of the way stories work to mislead them, to make them think they know what's going on. And it's that very knowledge that fools readers and allows Breaking Bad to surprise them, like no other show has before. You're goddamn right. <laughs>